Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a two-player game called Nagaraja. Nagaraja is a two-player only game where players are competing to dive into this cave tunnel underground area to try to discover the mo most relics the quickest to score the most points but be careful there may be some cursed relics along the way if you get too many of those your journey is over that's the theme of the game but really what you're doing is you're playing some cards trying to roll these cool little sticks that look something like this they have lines on one side also known as nagas and pips on the other and you're trying to get more pips on your rolls than your opponent so you can win these rooms. And you're also trying to roll Naga so you can play cards to manipulate your die rolls and allow you to play some cards to maybe affect your opponent or help yourself. That's essentially the game. You're trying to do this better than another player to score the most points and hopefully not reveal your three cursed relics in doing that. So that's enough talking about it. Let's go down to the table and see just exactly how all that works. All right, so here's a game of Naga Raja all set up. It's only a two-player game, so... That's why you only see the two boards. So let me go through setup fairly quickly. Uh, you're going to give each player a board. Each player is also going to get the corresponding um, pieces that go on the side of the board of their color. So this player has silver, this player has gold. You're going to shuffle them, randomly place them at each of the nine entrances or sides of the, the board. Not down here because this is your entrance to your, your cave or tunnel, whatever. You're going to give each player five cards, shuffle them. Deal them out, give them five. Shuffle the room stack, flip one, and if there's a space for, that looks like this, if there's a space that looks like that, you're gonna take one of these little blue amulet tokens and put it on there. You're gonna sit the bottomless pit here off to the side, the rest of the amulets and all of the sticks that you can roll. And you're gonna give somebody first player, in this case, it's silver. So that's the way that I roll with it. So the game is really simple. On your turn, you're gonna do a couple things. You're gonna play some cards to get some sticks to roll. Then depending on the outcome of those rolls, if you roll a line, also known as a, a Naga, you can play a card and whoever has the most pips will get to claim the room tile to put it into their cave to try to work their way through to open up and expose some of the tokens and the artifacts. And that's it. First one, the uh, game's gonna end in three ways. If the board's full, the game will end. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If someone reveals three of their cursed relics, the other player will win. Or if somebody gets 25 points, they'll be the winner. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me explain how the cards work a little bit. So I'm gonna show you this one. So if you look at this card, it has some icons up here that's showing who it can be played on if it's a white arrow it's played on the player that plays the card if it's red it can be played on the opponent sometimes there's both you can play it on either or it's going to show you what sticks you can roll should you play this card during the stick rolling phase and it's going to show you what the card does if you play it during the card playing phase which just happens after we roll sticks so in this case if i played this card i get a roll a brown stick a white stick and a green stick and then whatever happens happens so the reason the symbols on the cards are important is during the dice rolling or the stick rolling phase, you can play cards that have the same symbols. So if you look at these cards, I have three that have the same symbols, two that have the same symbol. Arrows are irrelevant when it comes to this part. So what I'm going to do is I want to play these two cards. They have the same symbol in the corner. I can play these two cards. It's going to let me roll two brown sticks, two white sticks and a green stick. So these are the cards I'm going to play. We'll put them down right here. And then it will be, this player will do the same thing. I'm going to do it off camera just to kind of keep some of the mystery alive. Uh, and they're going to play these two. All right, so they're going to play these two. You can play one, two, three, however many cards you want to play, but you have to play one. All right, so then we're going to reveal. So this player reveals they're going to be rolling 
or throwing two brown, two white, and a green. And this player reveals that they are going to be throwing one white and six green. So they'll get their six green. Their one white. Discard these cards because they're dead. And they'll throw them. I'll explain the results here in a little bit. Then this player is going to get two brown, two white, and a green. Discard the cards because they're dead. All right, so now, now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the results of the rolls. So if you look at this player, they have four, eight, ten, twelve pips, and one raga or naga. That means they can play one card. This player has two pips and a whole bunch of nagas, five nagas. So they can play five cards if they wanted to. They only have three, so they're not going to be able to play five. All right, so now that I have one naga, that means I can play one card from my hand. And the way I'm going to play the cards, I'm going to use them for the abilities that are on the bottom. So I can add four pips, two pips, or um, flip two pips or two sticks of an opponent. I'm not going to do any of that because I'm winning handily. So I'm just going to ignore this. So because I have more pips than them, that are they can also play cards. So let me see what they have here. Two, six, nine, eight, ten. Alright, so here are the cards they have. They could play both of the cards with pips. That's going to give them seven more. That would only give them nine. So I would still beat them with ten. So they're not going to play any cards either. The top one's going to let them switch rooms. They don't have any rooms yet. So they're also not playing any cards. So they're going to get rid of their sticks. Because this player, because I won with the most pips, I get to take this tile and I can put it on my board starting at an entrance so say I wanted to put it like this if I can get a pathway from my entrance to an amulet I can flip the amulet or I could have always gone like this then I can just start move, working my way up the path so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna flip the amulet amulet and it's gonna give me two points so now I have two points of the 25 that I need. Here's what that looks like, so just in case you couldn't see it that well. So it's just that, with two points. All right, and then that is the turn. So whoever didn't get the room is going to be able, is going to be the new first player. So that will be this player. So they're gonna get the map. And then what they get to do is they get to draw three cards. They're gonna keep two of them, and they're gonna give the opponent one. So what they're going to do is they want to keep, these are the cards, and here are the bottoms. So those are the abilities. So they have a bunch of green sticks, three white sticks, and two white sticks and a green stick. So they want to keep the three green sticks, or the three white sticks and the two white sticks and one green stick card. That's what they want. So they're going to keep those. And then they're going to give me the five green sticks. All right, so now we're both going to pick, or we'll flip a new room as well, so we know what we're playing for. So we will put another amulet on that bad boy. All right. And now I'm going to play... So I'm going to play these two. So I'm going to be rolling two white, a brown, and four greens. Put these face down so my opponent doesn't know what I'm playing. And then they are going to play these two, and they are going to play five white sticks. So that might help them. So there's a card that comes with the game that's a breakdown of the sides of the cards. Uh, let me see if I can grab that real fast. And it looks like this. So the brown card, the brown stick has no Nagas, so you're not gonna be able to play any cards. The white stick has one Naga side and the green has two Naga sides and one pip on each of the other sides. So each player will have that so they kind of know what the sticks are gonna do. So we're gonna reveal. I reveal that I'm playing all this stuff. The board's kind of wiggle, which is 
not great, but it's okay. And then they're revealing that they are going to be playing five white sticks. So they're going to take their five white sticks. Three, four, five. Roll them. And I'm going to take my one brown, two white, and four green. One brown, two white, four green. Roll them. So I have two Nagas. And three, six. Nine pips, and they have a whole pile of pips. Three, six, eight, eleven, thirteen pips, and no Naga. So they're not playing any cards. But I can play two cards. So let's see. So they're at two, five, eight, eleven, thirteen. I'm at six, nine. So none of the cards I have I want to play. I have increase two pips and rotate a room. I don't want to do any of that because even with two pips, I can't beat it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these away. They're going to win the tile. So they're going to take the tile. And they are going to walk that tile right to here. So they have an entrance to one of their side. And they now have a relic. A four point. We're going to call it a dinosaur. A four point. Dinosaur egg. I don't know if that's really what it is. But that's what I think it is. So that's cool. They haven't gotten a path to this. So they can't flip that over. So they're going to still have to try to work their way around to that or maybe rotate a tile or something. And then that is that turn. And then this player didn't get the room, so they would get the map. They'll get to do the three card deal. Here are the three cards that they drew. Now, uh, great, but they definitely want these two with the two the three brown sticks and they're going to give this one to the opponent we'll play through one more round and i think you're going to get the idea of this so i'm going to go ahead and play the two brown and the five green that's going to give me a lot of good cards normally these would be face down just like i've been doing but just to make it easier for me and this player is going to play this because they had the same symbol, so they're going to be throwing a lot of sticks too. So they're going to get three whites. Well, they have some whites. A brown and two green. So they're going to be throwing these here shortly. And then I am going to be throwing two brown and five green. Alright, so we'll get rid of these. These cards are dead. So here's mine. One, two, Seven, twelve, thirteen, and two Nagas. So they have three, six, eleven, and three Nagas. I have the map, so I get to play cards first. What I want to do is, I'm actually going to play this because I'm worried of what they have. So I'm going to play this for two pips. So I'm gonna get rid of all my Nagas. I'm not gonna play anything else. So I have two, three, eight, 10, 13, 14, 15. They have three, six, 11. So they can play three cards. So first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna play this one. It's gonna let them draw two cards. One, two. They're gonna play this one. It's gonna let them draw two cards. One, two, and then for the third one, they're going to play this. They're just going to let them look at two of the relics around their board or their opponents. But they're going to actually look at theirs, so they want to look at this one. So it's a four-pointer, and they want to look at this one. Curse. So this is a curse relic. They're red. They're all worth six points. So if you reveal three of these, you lose. You want to be careful with those. You always want to know where those are. And they're going to discard that card, and they're done. All right, so I win the room because I have way more pips than the opponent, which I never flip the room. I do that all the time. So that's the room we were playing for. And then so I get that room. I'm going to put it. like this 
So I have an entryway, I get to flip this one. So this is another two point amulet. And then I also make it to this one and I flip it. It's a five pointer. So right now I have nine points to this player's four. So they didn't get the room, so they would take the map. They would draw three cards, keep two, give me one. And we would keep playing till somebody that has their board full. Then we'll see who has the most points. Someone's revealed their three curse relics, the other player would win. Or somebody gets to 25 points, then that player wins. And that's how they play Nagaraja. Let's go up to the top, see what we think about it. All right, so that was Nagaraja. I gotta say, um, I was at a camp this last week, and this is probably the most played game that I did at that camp. I think I played this six times. And I am first going to say that I'm awful at this game, and I lost every single time. Not by revealing relics, not by filling the board and having at least points, but just by getting destroyed. It was usually like 30 to 6 or something awful like that. Not quite that bad, a little bit of hyperbole, but it was bad. So, I played it a ton, so that must mean that I like it, and that would be correct. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's just go into it. I'm not going to give pros and cons, I'm just going to talk about what I like about it. And then I'm going to show you some of the components and the uh, insert, because the insert in this game is awesome. So let's jump in. Uh, I adore this game. It's super fun. The box says it plays 30 minutes, and I think that's 100% correct. You can bang out a couple games of this in an hour, um, and you're going to have fun every time you play it. I like it's super simple to teach. You're just playing cards. The cards are used in multiple ways. You're either going to use them to get sticks or you're going to use them to play to manipulate your die rolls or affect your opponent or look at some of your relics or whatever. And then you're going to roll the sticks. Whoever has the highest amount of pips on their sticks gets to take the room, put it into their board, try to make a pathway to their relics to score 25 points. That's the game. Pretty easy to explain. The trickiest part is understanding what some of the symbology is because a lot of the cards have a lot of symbols. Not a big deal. It's all in the back of the rule book right here. So if you get lost, it's just right there really easy and also some of these amulets the little like blue tokens these little blue tokens some of those have some icons on them that aren't points so you have to look those up once you look them up once you're good to go uh the artwork is fantastic it's vincent dutre you can look at it i mean you can tell it's him all day whoops that's cards upside down you can see that that's vincent dutre i mean i showed you a little bit of it during the run through but it's just really nice art the components are nice, thick cardboard, really nice. This is Asmodee production, Hurricane Games, just really nice. The player board is a square. It's a little warped, so but it's two-sided, so maybe you can just play it on the other side and kind of push it down. These sticks are my favorite part. They're four-sided, so sometimes you'll roll them and they'll land like this, so you may have to re-roll it, especially these little green ones. These little green ones have a tendency to land you know, like this. So then you have to pick it up and re-roll it. But this is it's fun to roll these sticks and see what comes up. That's enjoyable. Flipping the room tiles. You never know what kind of room you're going to get. If it's going to have an amulet. If it's going to be a sweet four-way intersection that also has an amulet. Amulet. So much fun. Good game. I can't get enough. And I'm glad that I get to do this review. And I get to keep this in my collection. So this is big time BGM accepted. I'm going to give this one a, we're going to say a 4 out of 4.5 out of 5. So that's a 9 out of 10 on the BGG scale. I love it. Staying in my collection. One of my favorite two player games. So I'm super pumped. Oh, I did say I was going to talk about the insert. So let's look at that. Has spaces in here for everything. It fits nicely. It doesn't fall out even if you turn it upside down. This insert, simple thing. Maybe it makes the box too big for what it is, but it looks awesome, and I appreciate that. So that's the last thing I'm going to talk about. I love this game. If you get a chance, if you can find it, go pick it up. If you like playing two-player games, you will not be disappointed. So that's Nagaraja. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and keep gaming. Keep gaming.